Hi everybody and welcome to our uh, unit one part two notes and today we're going to talk about something that are known as significant figures. All right as we mentioned um, earlier in class we really deal with numbers as far as representing measurements in here. All right. And when we talk about measurements, they are, all of those measurements are taken with different tools. So let me give you a little bit of an example. If someone were to ask you, all right, how much do you weigh? All right. Chances are you're going to say your weight. Let's say uh, you weigh 117 pounds. Okay. Well, that's fine. And people would say, okay, you wouldn't say 117 point, you know, five, eight, seven, four, three, seven pounds. That would be strange, right? Um, not only do you probably not know that, okay, but that's also just a number that's just so extreme. Where would you have gotten that from? Because most of our, most of the time when we weigh ourselves, we do that on scales. Now, some of the scales are pretty good and can go to the 10th or 100th place, but they're certainly not taking it out to that many digits. And that's what significant figures is really all about. All measurements are dependent on the instrument used for that measurement. All right, whoops, sorry, I just went a little too fast there. Ooh, here we go, all right. So that's why we typically would give our weight as about 117 if that was your weight, or maybe, you know, 117 if you have a digital scale, 0. 0.6, something like that. Most scales that we would have in our house wouldn't take it out that far, okay? So let's go through some examples, all right and look at the actual definition of a significant figure. Significant figure or digits, they're figures and digits, you can just use those interchangeably, are all of the digits known based on the tool, meaning you actually see it on the instrument, plus one estimated digit, all right? So if we look at our three rulers that I have here, I'd like you to write those out, okay? Take a second in your notes and draw those rulers. Okay, so looking at our first ruler, or this is really supposed to be a meter stick, great, okay. So all we can tell here, right, is that this line that I'm trying to measure on this meter stick, what's the only thing you know? Well, you know that it's less than a meter, right? And we might estimate, okay, well, it's about halfway between. So the only measurement I could really make using this meter stick would be 0.5 meters, all right? When I look at this, if I didn't make the measurement, when I look at this measurement and I say 0.5 meters, wow, that was not a great meter stick that they used. It did not have a lot of calibration. It really was not a great tool. Our second meter stick, well, this has a lot more calibration on it. This is giving you some more information. Now I know for sure that my line is between the 50 and the 60, right? So I'm still dealing with a meter here. Um, so this is in centimeters. We're gonna keep it in terms of meters. So I know now that it's definitely 0.5. And then I'm gonna estimate, I think it's about 0.53. So again, if you're just the reader, not the person taking the measurement, you can look at that and say, oh, well, between these two measurements, I've never seen the ruler before, but between these two that I'm looking at, this was taken with the better tool, with the better instrument. And then you can just see if you had more calibration on your meter stick, you could go even further out. You're gonna have practice doing this on some practice sheets and in the lab that you're gonna be doing um, later in this unit. All right, so let's go over very quickly these rules. If you're not the one doing the measurement, as I said, you're gonna have to look at numbers and determine how many significant figures there are. So let's look at these rules. All right, all non-zeros are significant. So if I were to give you the number 2.47 grams and ask you how many significant figures there are, you would tell me three, no question, all right? Now, rule number two, zeros between other digits are significant. So what does that mean? Well, zeros are kind of where we come into a little bit of problems with significant figures. So I call this the sandwich rule. If you have zeros that are sandwiched between other significant figures, the three and the five, they count and they are actually part of your measurement. All right, great. Now, final zeros, final zeros after the decimal point are also part of your measurement. They're significant. So let's take a look at this, 4.50 grams. 
Well, we know mathematically there's no difference between 4.5 and 4.50. So why is that zero there? It's there to tell you that the instrument told you the four, told you the five, and that zero is an estimated digit. So you would say that that value has three significant figures. All right. Now, number four is where people tend to have a hard time. Zeros used solely for spacing the decimal are not significant. And this is where the metric system comes in. Remember with the metric system, it's very easy to make things larger and smaller just by changing those prefixes. So if I look at a value like 0 0.0045 kilometers, those zeros, yes, they're after the decimal place, but they're not final, all right? This value would only have two significant figures because these chances are this was originally measured in let's say centimeters and then converted to kilometers so these are just placeholders all right to show that this is a small amount of kilometers same goes if you have a larger number 4500 grams all right these zeros are placeholders again this is probably something that was measured in milligrams and then converted all right, there are certain numbers that you won't ever have to worry about significant figures, which means that you'll use them mathematically in a problem, but you won't um, count them when it comes to significant figures. Counting numbers, if for example, I was in class and I counted all of, your, all of the students, that's not a measurement, that's just counting, right? Exactly define quantities. Anytime I give you a conversion factor in one meter, there's 100 centimeters. That's not a measurement I made, that's just a conversion. All right, you use those mathematically, but you don't worry about them in terms of significant figures. Okay, you have a couple examples in your notes. Pause the video and please write how many significant figures you think are in each of those values. All right, so let's take a look at our answer here. All right, um, in letter A, all of those are um, non-zero, so they all count as significant, so you're gonna have four significant figures. These zeros are placeholders, so just two. These two are placeholders, but that one's sandwiched, so that is four significant figures. Letter D, it's an odd measurement, but we're just doing this to kind of show the examples. You have sandwiched, so that is four significant figures. Here, all of these are, this is a final zero after a decimal place, so those become sandwiched, so all four would count there. And then finally, 4,000, no decimal place involved. All of those zeros are placeholders. So that's just one significant figure. All right. Now, sometimes you're going to be given numbers that are in scientific notation. When given scientific notation, you're going to look at this portion of the number to determine your significant figures. So in this case, that's 2. The 10 times, I'm sorry, times 10 to the third, that counts as placeholders. So in this measurement, there are simply two significant figures. All right, great. So let's move on. And why are we doing all of this? Well, what's the purpose? Well, number one purpose was to, is to make sure that you make measurements correctly. Again, everything the instrument shows you and an estimated digit. The second reason why we go through this is to make sure when you do calculations, you are representing those measurements correctly. A calculated answer cannot be more accurate than the numbers used to get that answer. Please, please, please star that in your notes. That is highlighted, that is a big deal. What this means is you're gonna have to round. Our magic calculators here, they are wonderful, but they don't round for you. You have to become comfortable rounding yourself. All right, so let's go through. There's a couple rules that we have to go through. The first is for adding and subtracting. And I will be honest with you, this is gonna be the one you're gonna use the least. All right, answer should have the same number of digits after the decimal point as the number with the least in the calculation. So remember when adding, things have to have the same label. So we're dealing with the exact same type of tool. So this one only went out to the hundredths place while this instrument went much farther out. So we're gonna have to add them and you just put them in your calculator and you're gonna round your number so it just has two after the decimal place right there. 
All right, now the more important one is for multiplication and division. In multiplication and division, you can see I even have a star there in my notes because this is the one we're gonna be using all of the time. The answer should have, which means you have to round it, you have to do it, um, to have the same number of digits as the number with the least significant figure, figures in the calculations. So let's look at this. 4.53 meters times 2.8 meters. 4.53 has three significant figures. 2.8 only has two. Whatever I get in my calculator, I have to round it so your answer just has two. So in that case, you're gonna get 13 meters because when I actually put it into my calculator, 4.53, you should be doing this as well, times 2.8, I get 12.684. Well, if I'm gonna round 12.6, I'm rounding that up, and I only can have two digits, that's 13. Don't forget to have your label there. All right, second example. You're gonna take this mass divided by that volume. This is a density. All right, my mass has four significant figures, but my volume only has three. I must round my answer to have only three. Again, these two zeros are placeholders, so they don't count when it comes to significant figures, okay? All right, great. So you have a practice sheet on significant figures. You can certainly take a look and give, a tr give that a try, along with the derived unit practice, all right, because you want to do those calculations and do those um, rounding to proper significant figures. We're going to talk about this in class as well, and you'll have a chance to talk to your lab group about it. All right, have a great one.